meditate, don't squeeze yourself. Just sit comfortably and let your breath energy flow naturally. Be just as you are. Don't think. Don't think I'm a meditator. Don't think I'm humble. Don't think I'm an egotist. Don't think anything. Just be. This is the Om Ahum meditation by Lama Tubten Yeshi at uh, Geneva, Switzerland. I'm not sure exactly the date of this one, but um, I'll have the link for it up on the website. So Lama Yeshi says when you meditate, don't squeeze yourself. The actual meditation now. Purification of body. Place your hands in whatever position is comfortable for you and close your eyes. Visualize a white ohm at the center of your brain, a red ah at your throat, and a blue whom at your heart. These letters are made of radiant light. If you can't visualize these letters in Tibetan or Sanskrit, you can visualize them in English or any other language. I will have a picture of these up at the 12stepbuddhist.com for you to look at. You can also visualize a white ball of light as the Om, a red ball of light as the Ah, and a blue ball of light as the Hum. So Om, Ah, Hum, white red, blue, at the center of your brain, then down to the center of your throat, and then again, again the blue whom or blue ball in the center of your heart. Concentrate on the white ohm in your brain. Recognize that this white ohm is the pure energy of the divine body of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Make the sound OM and visualize that radiant white light emanates from the syllable, goes down your central psychic channel and fills your whole body with blissful radiant white light energy. All conceptions and impure energy of body are cleansed and purified. So with this one, the... If you don't know what the central psychic channel is, I mean, it's basically, just think of, if you're sitting up straight, we always do practice sitting up straight. And just sit, visualize the uh, kind of a tube going down from the crown of your head straight down through your neck and through your spine and out the bottom. And that's the central psychic channel. And there are details available on this, but that's good enough for this. And uh, filling it with blissful, radiant, white light energy. So let's do this together at this part. And you can do the visualization and we'll chant OM together. She continues, it is important to visualize that your entire body, from head to toe, is completely full of blissful, radiant, white light energy. Feel that. Continue making the sound of OM for two or three minutes while you are meditating and purifying your body. So you can stop the podcast and do that or just learn this and you know, go off and do it on your own. I'm just walking you through it. We can say Om a couple more times together just to get, just to get uh, together with it. Um, Omiya, she also adds, when you stop making the sound, don't do or think anything. Remain perfectly still, fully aware, unconcerned with good or bad, not reacting, free of any internal conversation, with all your attention on the light consciousness at the center of your brain. 
be there, be intensely aware and let go without sluggishness, without distraction, without expectation. Intensive awareness leads to the experience of zero or egolessness, emptiness, nothing. Comprehend this intense awareness and let go. So as Lama Suryadas would say, um, put the inner lawyer uh, to rest for a moment and just allow yourself to be in this space. So let's say Om again, visualizing the white ball of light or the letters O and M or the Tibetan letter, if you have that available. is the intensive awareness which leads to the experience of emptiness or egolessness. I was, I was recently at a retreat with Reggie Ray and he, Reggie Ray is one of the old Trumpa students uh, now teaching in Prestone, Prestone, Colorado. And Reggie made mention of the experience of emptiness being something possibly like you feel intensely lost like you can't find yourself and don't freak out that's the point egolessness is the point so if that's a little bit um, shocking uh, relax it's part of the spiritual path so for the purification of speech concentrate on the red ah at your throat chakra like the sun at sunset Recognize that this red ah, the letters A-H, or the red ball, is the pure speech of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Make the sound ah for two or three minutes and visualize that radiant red light emanates from the syllable, goes down your central psychic channel and fills your whole body with blissful, radiant red light energy. All conceptions and impure energy of speech are cleansed and purified. So let's try that together. Again, when you finish the recitation, just be without any expectation or interpretation in a state of intense awareness of your own consciousness. Understand your experience of the non-dual, the non-self-existent I of nothingness, zero, empty space as truth, as reality. This increases your energy for strong, comprehension of reality. This experience is much more real than your waking fantasy sense world. We'll say ah again together. Ah. the purifying the impure energy of speech cleansed and purified. Amiyashi continues, when uncontrolled distracting thoughts come during meditation, 
when uncontrolled, distracting thoughts come during meditation, sorry, realize that not only you, but also all other sentient beings are in the same situation of not being able to control the mind. On this basis, cultivate equilibrium and loving kindness for all others. Thus, your uncontrolled, distracted mind becomes a resource for the, de for the development of loving kindness. When it arises, direct that intense awareness of loving kindness towards your consciousness. Hence, there are two ways you can meditate here. Either place intense awareness on your own consciousness, or, when distractions arise, direct intense awareness of loving kindness on your own consciousness. So you can be aware, or you can notice that you're distracted and be compassionate to yourself, basically, is the way I think Lama Yeshi means that. So we'll try it all one more time. This is the red ball in the center of the throat purifying speech energy. She continues, practicing this way, your loving kindness manifests in your central channel, at your heart, as a full moon disk. Purification of mind. So for this one, at your heart, on the blue moon, on the, excuse me, on the moon disk, stands a radiant blue whom. Recognize that this blue whom, and you'll hear it pronounced whom or whom, recognize that this blue whom is the non-dual wisdom of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Your heart is pure, cool, and calm, opened by the radiant light of the moon and the whom. Infinite blue light radiates from the whom. All narrow thoughts disappear all indecisive minds disappear. All obsessed minds disappear. So let's do whom together. You remember this is the blue ball at the heart center, the heart meaning the middle of the middle of your being, the middle of your chest, the center of your conscious awareness. Oh. All obsessed minds disappear. The radiant blue light from the moon and the whom fills your whole body. Your whole body feels blissful. Filled with light, there is no room for fanatical, dualistic concepts. you got to love Lama Yeshi. I think he died in about 1984, but he, there's no room for fanatical, dualistic concepts. Awesome. At the same time, make the sound hum for two to three minutes. Then feel infinite blue light like your consciousness Embrace the entire universal reality. Your intensive awareness embraces all of universal reality. Feel and be without expectation or superstition. She concludes, there are two essential experiences that we can achieve through this meditation. 
wisdom and method. The wisdom experience is intensive awareness of your own consciousness. The method experience comes when you get distracted and use that lack of control as a resource to regenerate loving kindness. Then when you are again free of distraction, remain in the experience of wisdom. In summary, when your concentration is good, place your attention on wisdom. When you are distracted, generate loving kindness. I mean, this is cool because there's no excuse. Um, I just did a meditation practice before the before starting the podcast, and you know, it's, sometimes you know, as an addict for me, it's easy to beat myself up and be like, "Oh, you're not doing it good here." This is, wait a minute, what's your problem? You know, uh, boy, you shouldn't even try meditating. You should just go watch Letterman, and you know, you'll feel better. Um, but I really have to have the diligence and the the um, exertion of uh, you know being willing to you know look at my mind and experience you know what's happening what is the condition you know what is my state of being you know if you're a zen person you know that's the deal looking at it experiencing it noticing it if you're of a passion a person you know noticing that in your body noticing the the physical sensations and the experiences of sensory awareness and so forth so i mean this is really the deal you got to have guts to uh to try practice and to sustain it and, you know, this idea of wisdom, the wisdom experience is intensive awareness of your own consciousness. And, and the wisdom is emptiness, is knowing that all phenomena are empty. And it is partially an intellectual, you know, path um, to know that. But then we are in the abandonment of concepts and in the pure state of awareness of the Buddha of the Buddha mind, of Buddha mind, of Buddha nature. Um, so that's the wisdom. And when we're not in wisdom, we can have compassion. It's pretty useful. As Lama Yeshu says, recitation of the Om Ahum mantra is very useful. Since you are often too busy to recite long mantras, you can recite this short one, which represents all other mantras. And that's very interesting because... Um, I won't you know, really try to get into it, but if you are a Sanskrit scholar, if you talk to these um, people, if you listen to, for example, like Joseph Campbell has a DVD set on um, mythology. I think he has a couple different series from old PBS broadcasts. And they talk about how in the Sanskrit language is this um, is designed as a vehicle for spiritual development. And you know, within the sound of these syllables are contained all other sounds, you know, all other sounds that are possible to be made by humans, but then also the divine energy, the spiritual energy, the enlightened energy of the uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the three times. So Om Ahum, it's said by other teachers, uh, is the kind of the, the mantra that contains the essence of all mantras. So if you can't remember anything else, saying Omahum is uh, is good. So recitation of the Omahum mantra is very useful, Lama Yeshi says, and in particular when you say Om, intensive awareness is energized and your consciousness awakens within you. And you know what, there are people, and I think mostly in, in more uh, Hindu traditions, but there are people who have developed you know, complete systems around Om. I watched a DVD not too long ago uh, where the guy's got a whole retreat center and you know it's all about Om and they just chant Om and that is the practice. So it's pretty uh, pretty deep stuff. Lama Yeshe continues: the purpose of meditation is to awaken us from the deep sleep of ignorance, to awaken us to a universal reality to universal reality, not to our usual fanatic reality. Mantra touches a wider reality. That's why it's useful. So we can say Om Ahum together once. And remember, if you really want to get these, if you really want to get this down, and you really want to get this deal, this is you know, part of a, a system of Vajrayana practice and you really need to find a qualified Lama to get a good relationship with, to have a direct uh, connection 
so to speak, so that you can really uh, have an ongoing um, kind of a give and take, back and forth conversation with that person and really get the teachings to really apply them. I'm just giving you this to let you know about it. And okay, Om Ahum together. Om so you can practice that and you can look this up. I'll have the link. I got this from the Lama Yeshe Wisdom Archive. And it's a mind blower. Lama Yeshe was awesome. If you read my book, there's a story in there about how I came in contact with the, the Lama Yeshe people and that sort of thing. I just want to uh, say a couple of things here, but I'm going to pause so that I can collect my thoughts. I will be right back. So I wanted to mention the uh, activity on the podcast is awesome. There's uh, over 11,000 downloads since I started it, I think, at the end of July. And this is episode number five, the Omahuma meditation. And there's, I mean, depending on which stats you look at, um, there are at least 7,000 visits to the website, 16,000 page views. Most people look at a couple of pages. They don't just uh, come and go like uh, with a typical blog. And there's, uh, they spend a few minutes on the site so on average. So this is uh, very interesting to me because I like to know if what I'm doing is reaching people and is of interest. I will say that the number one most popular article that I've written is how to use a mala. So that tells me that people like to know how to do stuff. Um, I did put a um, survey, a poll on the right hand side of the, of the website, just with some questions on what you might like to hear um, in podcasts. So it seems like people like the guided meditations. The the uh, last one, the meditation on death that I did with my uh, friend Don uh, and Tysa, that was massive. I mean, people just really took that more than anything else. So um, I like to do more of these kind of guided things. Uh, that seems to be popular how to, you know, how to do stuff. So there's plenty of, plenty of ideas I've got. And if you have other ideas, please let me know. I'm happy to explore that. Um, I did get a, there are a couple of Q&As, and I haven't done any Q&As in a bit. And, you know, I apologize for not being as active on this um, podcasting as I would like to be. I've just finished the absolute final master proof edit of the book, The 12-Step Buddhist. And I send it to the publisher, and uh, they've got, you know, one more run through that they're going to do just to get it set for the typographer. So, um, my last uh, adjustments are complete. Um, there's some pretty exciting stuff going on. The, um, the most exciting of which is that Bob Thurman wrote a foreword for me and it's really wonderful. And just, you know, thank you, Bob. Unbelievable. Really, really appreciate your, your depth and, uh, and connection with the book, and that's just so important to me. There's also some great people that have uh, provided endorsements, uh, Buddhist teachers, psychologists, and others, so uh, that's pretty fun. And the book, of course, will be out March 10th. You may pre-order now at Amazon.com. Uh, if you'd like to pre-order, that would be helpful. I think it's $10.88. You save $5 off the cover price, so... Um, that's pretty cool, and I've got my uh, Scrivener uh, software open and have got three or three or four other projects that I'm uh, working up next. So that's all a lot of fun, and really appreciate everybody's interest in it internationally uh, and the feedback that I've got so far. So 
Matter of fact, one person contacted me who had uh, 20 years of sobriety and said, wow, I've read, she, she said, I've read every book on recovery out there and everything uh, that you can think of in typical, you know, Buddhist and Hindu and other spiritual literature. She really found it useful. So I'm really stoked at all this positive feedback and I hope that it helps you and someone that you love. So um, that's why I've been a little bit distracted. I did write an article at the request of some people who contacted me through the website. I wrote an article on how to start a 12-step sangha. And uh, I think there was a Shambhala person and, and someone else in Washington that wanted to um, get one going. So it's up there. You know, get, Take the idea and run with it. You know, Do it. Do, change it. Make it yours. Uh, whatever you want. I'm really, really excited to be a part of the 12-step sangha. I started it about a year and a half ago. And I just wanted to meditate a little bit more with people in recovery. And it turned out to be something that a lot of people really enjoy. And it's actually one of my favorite meetings. So it's nice to meditate, you know, quietly for, you know, 20, 30 minutes or whatever, and, and then share a little bit. And people are really hungry for something a little different than your typical meeting. Um, so that's really cool. So I've got a couple of questions, um, in the queue here. Um, one person wanted to know about employing the 12 steps in regard to self-esteem and how does the serenity prayer figure into your 12 step groups? Well, you know, if you do the steps, you build self-esteem. If you practice Buddhism, you build self-esteem or shall we say no self-esteem. Ha ha. Um, and, you know, the typical thing they say in 12-step recovery is, you know, you do esteemable things and you feel you know, better about yourself. So it's really about our actions. And Buddhism certainly gives you plenty of tips on how to act. And I think that just comes about with being sober, too. You feel less like a piece of shit and more like a human being. And hopefully, you know, getting into, you know, tapping into uh, your spiritual roots and, and feeling like a spiritual being. So there's a lot that can be said about that. I think if you work the program and you do your meditation practice and you get involved in your spiritual groups and do community service, that you obviously are going to feel better. Um, in terms of the serenity prayer, we just use the, a dedication that I wrote. Um, we dedicate the merits of this practice to all suffering addicts. May everyone be free of suffering and the root of suffering. May everyone enjoy happiness and the root of happiness keep coming back it works that's how we end the 12-step sangha meeting just kind of took the typical mahayana kind of you know uh dedication and added kind of just specialty for for addicts in there so that's how we do it and because people you know don't necessarily always want to hear about god if that's not their thing uh, which brings us to our next topic uh, this is John, who uh, just sent this a couple of days ago. He says, Buddhists say there is no God, uh, which would mean by logic that God would have to exist in order to say there was no God. For every action, there is an opposite reaction. If you believe in a God, there must be an opposite of that which is no God. How can you say there is no God if God cannot be proven? Um, I didn't say there was no God. Buddha didn't say there was no God. Matter of fact, in Buddhism, in Tibetan Buddhism particularly, they talk about a lot of gods. And there's a lot of beings with more power than humans, and they're, you know, in the formless realms, and, you know, um, coming from Hinduism, when the Buddha, you know, started teaching, he was dealing with, you know, the current religion of the time and, and, you know, taking into consideration, if you look at sutras, you know, they talk about the Buddha giving teachings to these gods. So the difference is that in Buddhism, the Buddha doesn't refute you know, the existence of these beings, but he basically disproves the possibility through logic that there are beings that, or there's a being that and created everything and is in control of everything and is really just the one um, unique individual uh, consciousness that is the boss. It's rather more of, you know, we all are streams of consciousness which um, exist uh, you know, through cause and effect you know, throughout beginningless time. And as we get you know, further down that road, you know, we can develop, you know, in 
higher or lower realms, you know, and you can you can look at the literature for this and, and find out about how deep in hell you can get. If you're an addict, you, you know, uh, it can get pretty deep and it can go deeper than that, say the teachings. So then you can go all the way to the to the foremost body realms and you know this is where we get into being addicted to the calm state and um, using meditation like a drug and becoming attached to experience and not going beyond that and winding up in this sort of space of a of a uh, an unenlightened being still stuck in samsara but with a whole shitload of good karma and merit which leaves you in this sort of state of bliss until your gas tank runs out and there ain't no more left and then you bounce back to a lower realm maybe back to square one who knows so i talk about that in the book in, in a lot of detail anyways through all the steps you know like all the god steps i mean it's really kind of the whole purpose of the, writing the book is to kind of you know look at this from a buddhist perspective and really be able to work a program and be in 12 steps without feeling like a alien so get it read it and uh, we'll take it from there but basically you know buddhists don't say there is no god so uh, i don't know where you heard that but that's my answer anyways you guys so i've really enjoyed our conversation uh thus far this evening and it's pretty late here 2 29 a.m i love doing a podcast late it's awesome try to keep them under a half hour this one's been 32 minutes you'll see more on the website i'm going to do a review of the book yantra yoga by shogunaka norbu rinpoche and it is a super awesome practice of tibetan yoga which involves um, controlling the breathing and learning how to breathe through physical movements and meditations and visualizations and I've been doing some of it for um, a while on and off, but really steadily for uh, several, I'm going to say probably about four or five months uh, working on the breathing. And then the past five or six weeks, I've been doing a lot of you know, like yoga at Bally's and going to the gym and running and really increasing the lung capacity and so forth. And I'm telling you, I feel completely different. It's amazing. So I'm really thrilled to be having the uh, Yantra Yoga teachers coming to Portland to uh, teach us in more depth. And I, I highly and wholly recommend the book Yantra Yoga, which you can get from snowlionpub.com, uh, Snow Lion Publications. You can buy direct from them or Amazon. There should be a link to it on my site as soon as I put up the blog article. So, all right, I'm at 33 minutes, 33 seconds. Thank you for listening. Uh, more podcasts, more articles. And talk to you soon.